Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, let me share my screen and we will get started. Okay, uh, let's uh, play a little bit with storied procedures. And for in this example, I will be using uh, ASPRINER.NET. And that's what's in actual questions from the customer. They needed to execute a storage procedure that returns some data back to the application. So this is a storage procedure. Uh, and uh, this is SQL Server and ASPRINER.NET, which makes sense. The uh, two of them often used together. Uh, let me make it slightly bigger so you can actually see it. And storage procedures are useful pieces of code that can be placed directly to the database. And uh, it's quite normal to use a bunch of them. So maybe uh, in your organization, uh, you have a DBA uh, who will create a bunch of storage procedures that will do all proper checks. So no web application can uh, possibly break anything. So uh, this is one of the approaches and some organizations do that. Some organizations put everything in the code, both are valid approaches. So what we have here, uh, there is a table and uh, our storage procedure takes uh, three parameters and it checks if uh, such record already exists and if it does exist so we use an exists uh, uh, function right here so if this kind of uh, record already exists then we set a uh, info bar variable as posted and if it's not uh, let me do this let me do it. it's easier to read then we set it to not post it. And what else we do? At the end, we just do select and we return a record set that contains a single variable and single row, single field that's named message. And in that message variable, we will output our info bar uh, variable. We set to post it or not post it. And obviously, uh, this is the syntax for SQL Server. But uh, in MySQL, it will be similar, or in any other database, it just uh, it's kind of some, something is pretty simple. So all databases allow you to return something. So uh, I just want to show like there are like a few ways to return something from the storage procedure and returning a record set, even like an artificial record set like this is the easiest option because uh, in uh, our software PHP runner and ISPRunner.net is uh, we already work with record sets uh, after executing the SQL query so it's just much easier as opposed to any other method uh, other options would be to use uh, output parameter you specify parameter as uh, output but uh, the code is going to be a little bit trickier to work with this kind of storage procedure. So I am showing you the most simple way to deal with it. So let's uh, test uh, our storage procedure, see how it works. So we have this simple table. So, and we need to pass what's uh, uh, client ID, site ref, and core, value of core. So let's see what's in our database here okay it has no data so we probably need to insert something first let's insert the record here okay site ref one two three four five i don't even know what it means client id is also one two three four five and it has a bunch of fields uh, Okay, we have added one record. So if we refresh, we are going to see our record here. So, and if we execute our procedure, uh, so that would be the syntax. So let me close it so we don't have break it now. And our SQL query, so we're going to open one more query window. 
and the syntax to execute a stored procedure uh, in SQL Server is to use exec, then uh, started procedure name, and then uh, uh, it suggests that uh, client ID is one two three four five, and site ref parameter is also one two three four five. And I don't know if it's now or not now, so let's try this first and execute. It says not posted. Oh, C or now. Okay, yeah, of course. That's uh, a parameter name is different. So what we need to do here, we need to specify one, two, three, four, five in this field, and we should see different results. And then we will uh, use it in uh, hparameter.net and see what happens there, okay? And if you do it here, it should return posted, right? Execute it, should says posted, and if you do something else, it will say not posted. So we execute our storage procedure. So first thing we need to do, we need to craft this kind of uh, SQL string. We need to execute it. We need to get results back, and we will need to display it on the page. Very simple. So that is our ASP.NET project right here. And you can see that I have added this table here and I have added a button on the list page. Uh, that's a huge number of fields. Okay, that's my button. And in our code here, and uh, we don't have anything on the client before. On the server side, we really just have a single line of the code that does uh, DB lookup that executes a SQL statement and gets back a single value. Again, in, in this case, it's going to be our message. That's very simple. Uh, I, I will show you how to use some values from the current record. We will do something slightly different uh, and the point is we are executing our uh, storage procedure we getting our results back we assigning them to result txt and passing them to client after event and here we just uh, as a special syntax that will display a message next to the button Sometimes it's useful for like quick and uh, dirty output to see what happens. Not much. Okay. Anyway, let's do something that is a little bit more useful. Okay. And what we're going to do here, uh, instead of uh, selecting multiple records and deleting them, uh, all of them, uh, we are going to add a button that is uh, added, uh, will be added to each individual uh, Record row on the list page. Okay, uh, custom button. We, we will call it delete. We will code it from scratch and we're going to use storage procedure. Okay. Uh, delete. So here we are going to ask for the confirmation. Something like, do you really want to delete this record? And now uh, we want to make it looking good. So let's see how we can use uh, swell sweet alert functions to do this. So that's a lot of the code. We don't need all of that, but we want to keep that is important. So by default, we don't really need anything. Just slow the pop-up. So this is our question that we're going to paste here and when we select uh, button proceed it will have text yes please and it will use the value of proceed so this is our part of the code so we don't need to again do another pop-up here we're just going to do submit okay i hope it makes sense so if we click no that will execute the default part of the code, which is just break, do nothing. And let's see what happens. And on the server side, we are going to execute procedure that we do not have here yet. What we need to do, what we're we going to call it SP 
delete customer and we're going to pass uh, ID of the record. How are we going to get this? We need to do, we need to get the ID of the current record. And ID of a current record, so that will return a record array and in uh, sbrand.net, we use plus as a concatenation. And it's going to be like this. Uh, it's I just ID. And just in case, I will do this conversion to a string so they actually concatenate properly. So that's going to be our procedure, storage procedure, which we haven't created yet. Okay, let's go to the SQL server and create a new story procedure that will delete uh, our customer. Okay, story procedures, and we want to create a new one. Okay, that's a bunch of templated code that we do not need. And, and procedure name is going to be like this and parameter list Let's see in parentheses okay like this and it's going to be id integer We don't need this, this, and we are just going to delete from customers where ID equals our parameter named ID. That should be it. And just in case, we select message equals record. I'm pretty sure it's plus here in SQL Server as well. But if it doesn't work, we will figure out it was deleted. Cast, I don't remember the exact syntax, but expression, I don't know, as, as what, uh, 50, something like this. Okay, execute. Piece all this together. Let's see what we're doing in client after event and Oh, this button, right? This button needs to be moved to the individual uh, record row. Otherwise, our part, server part that retrieves current record will not work. That's part. So I am pretty sure it's going to be working right away. Let's see if we can, what else? Oh, let's see what will happen client after. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. And I click my button. Yes, please. And it says record two was deleted. And since we are not uh, refreshing the page, we still see the record that is not here and here. So if we want to uh do it properly we can probably redirect us back to uh, just reload the page 